All right. So with that public service announcement out of the way, we got several people that always joined us too from uh, from the Miltano team. So I, we got a couple of community members online. I mean, Meltona, Meltano, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's a it's a like a startup within GitLab. So I'll let the experts describe what what Meltano is. It's it's uh, uh, I got to see a demo from Giannis uh, last month in London. I was like pretty excited. Uh, so, Yanis, I'll let me turn things over to you. I'll let you and the team members introduce yourselves, and we'll go from there. Uh, so, go for it, Yanis. Yeah, thank you, Ray. So, hi, I'm Yanis from the Meldano team. With me are also Derek and Dawe from our team. Uh, I assume that a lot of people watching this stream, uh, let me share my screen, first of all. Okay. So, and start the presentation here. I hope that you can check it out. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, and I assume that a lot of people watching this stream have not had the, the chance to check Meltano in detail. So I'm going to start by introducing you to what we are building, describe the problem um, that we are, we are trying to solve, and go through a quick end-to-end -end demo of Meltano so that you can get a feeling of uh, what we are trying to achieve. In the end, I'm going to also discuss how someone can help us out and contribute to Meltano. So I'm going to start by presenting you how to use Meltano to extract data from your GitLab groups and projects, load the extracted data to a database, transform the data, and analyze the final results. Let me sorry. Yeah. So let's start with what is Meltano. Meltano is GitLab's open source product for the whole data lifecycle, all the way from extracting data from APIs to running ad hoc analysis, generating reports, and creating dashboards. We run Meltano as a startup inside the startup with its own group and projects. It is a separate, standalone product, not directly connected to the other GitLab offerings. We released last month our version one, but we are still at a very early stage and we are iterating really fast through features. So what's the status quo? The process I just described is called ELT, extracting, loading, and transforming data and preparing data to run for data analysis. That process is challenging and demands a solid infrastructure. People who don't really know much about data management or data engineering um, are being forced to learn how to do complicated things. I bet that anyone who has implemented or is responsible for running such an infrastructure will agree with me that you have to be really involved throughout the whole process. You have to find or implement and then maintain extractors for all the APIs that you want to support. For example, you may have data that you want to extract from Salesforce, Zendesk, Google Analytics, or other software as a service platforms. And the same is true for loading data to your databases and data warehouse. You have to also maintain loaders for Postgres or Snowflake or Redshift. Then there is the data transformation part. Most APIs return raw data that with tens or even more than a hundred attributes per entity. That data is not properly formatted for running data analysis. You have to find a way to clean the data transform the data to a proper format, and then define the dimensions and metrics that we are going to use for your analysis. And when most people think that they are done, the really hard part starts, orchestration. Everything must blend well. All the steps working flawlessly. You have to be able to define pipelines for extracting, loading, and transforming all your data. And then you have to find a way to run those pipelines, schedule pipelines, monitor pipelines running, 
know when something broke or automatically restart pipelines that fail. Meltano's vision is to take care of everything I just described. We apply the best practices of DevOps to the data management workflow. People in the industry call that data ops. So we provide an integrated workflow for data ops, data engineering, analytics, and business intelligence. And Meltano is a convention over configuration product. As you are going to see during the rest of my presentation, you can set up Meltano and uh, start extracting data from supported APIs in a few minutes, just using your mouse. That was what Meltano can do. I forgot to change the slide. So who are we building Meltano for? I described a lot of things that we want to do, but you, we have to take it one step at a time. So we're in the current version of Meltano, we're focusing on a single use case. Our target persona, the founder, is a busy person at a startup using Meltano in single player mode, as I'm going to do during my demo. They have access to all the systems and data across the company, but they are new to data. They do not write code or know how to write a SQL. They need to do the analysis to run the business, but they are not a data analyst. And they need to do both the data engineering and the data analyst tasks because there is nobody else there to do that for them. So in the current version of Meltano, we are focusing on running Meltano as a standalone application, supporting well-defined APIs, and providing an end-to-end -end flow using Meltano UI, our web-based API uh, interface, so that someone can extract data from those APIs and load the data to a local Postgres. So instead of telling you what Meltano is, let, let me show you how Meltano works. I have installed Meltano, have the latest version of Meltano in my laptop. I'm going to initialize a new Meltano project. Let's call it GitLab Hackathon. Let's go to the directory and I'm going to start Meltano UI. So the moment I get back, this is our starting page. Here I'm going to select an extractor. I'm going to load data from GitLab. I'm going to use as an example, loading data from GitLab Foz. So here I'm setting my private token and the group is gitlab.org and the project in this case is GitLab Foz. Let's say that let's extract data for a month. And I'm going to add a loader. Meltano is downloading those extractors and loaders as plugins and installs them locally. And as a loader, I'm adding Postgres. So I'm going to load the data to my local Postgres that I'm running. Let's wait for Meltano to install the, the loader. The moment I click save, the last part is, are the transformations. I'm going to run transformations. Meltano comes pre-bundled with a couple of transformations. And the moment I click save, a pipeline is ready for me with GitLab Postgres and to run once. I can run it on a schedule if I wanted. And I click save and that's it. I went from having nothing to, to start in the Meltano a project and start extracting data from GitLab Foz. So you can see here the process running. I'm going to leave it running and I'm going to go to the last step of the process. You can see it here, we can return back later, which is analyzing my data. So if I go to model, models are a start, provide the starting point to explore and analyze data for specific use cases. You can think of them as templates that uh, provide only what's necessary for each use case. So in this case, let's say, let's say that we want to check project stats for GitLab Foz. If I click here, let me remove this and that. And let's say that I want to check by milestone, year and date. And I want to check the total comments. So I want to check the total issue comments and the total 
match request comments. If I click run, not start date, sorry, due date, because milestones have a due date. I'm also going to filter my data, so I want the due to be a due date here, so it's not null. And I'm also going to add another filter. I'm going to say that the due date is less than September 19 when we merged the two projects. So if I click here run and increase that to 100 because we have more than 50 milestones and click on an area chart, I can see how comments went for issues and MRs in GitLab Foss. Uh, this is a very interesting report for me, so I'm, I can save a report so that I can use it later. I'm going to call it uh, uh, comments per milestone. Click save. And then I'm going to add it to dashboard. Dashboards allow me to, to have multiple reports at once and check them. They can be reports from different sources also. I'm going to call this community dashboard because this is GitLab Foss and a lot of community members contribute to GitLab Foss and the comments help me check that. I can also check other things like for example if I go to merge a march per month I can check by merge gear month and a march per offer for example and if I click that I can see how many uh, yeah per, per month how many average merge requests we had per offer, which is also shows uh, how uh, the engagement from the community. So I go, I'm going to save this as a Mars per offer per month, let's say, and add it uh, to my community dashboard, and also create a new one because average MRs are interesting engineering KPIs. So I have a second dashboard with my engineering KPIs. Let me show you one more uh, dashboard here, report. Let's say, let's use the bug report uh, that I also did in GitLab commit. So I want to check uh, bug reports and how we deal with them in uh, GitLab. So for example, I'm going to filter issues by and only keep the ones that have a, a bug label in them. And I'm going to check by created year and month. The date uh, an issue is created is when the bug was reported. And let's check uh, how many bugs we have reported and average days to close. So if I click run, and I increase this to 100 because we have more than 50 months here. Yeah, we can see here, for example, how the total bugs uh, went throughout the GitLab's history and how we decreased the time to address those problems. So this is also a very interesting report for me. Let's say that we call this bugs per month. And we can add this to our engineering KPIs dashboard. So now I have my dashboards. Let me show you somebody like our founding persona can come here and check uh, the dashboard. So check the engineering KPIs and have everything together. So the last part is that now that we have our dashboards and we can check the data is to have the data up to date uh, all the time, so I can go back to my pipelines. In schedule, you can see that the last uh, uh, job finished, and you can see here Meltano extracting all the data from GitLab, loading the data to a database, and transforming the data. So I can create a new pipeline. Meltano remembers my settings, so I don't have to add anything new, and I can schedule it to run daily so that I have up-to-date uh, uh, data every time I start my Meltano. So more or less, that's the end-to-end -end flow of Meltano. 
and you can see how we try to help uh, uh, people to extract their data and analyze their data by not having to set up anything using a CLI or create scripts or whatever. So let me go back to my uh, presentation. So what I presented was Meltano running as a standalone app. If you want to check it uh, in uh, the cloud, we also support uh, Meltano running the cloud and uh, you can use the one click up uh, of Meltano in digital, you can find one, the one click up of Meltano in digital oceans marketplace. So it's very easy to set up a droplet and test Meltano that way if you don't want to set it up locally. Finally, uh, a quick glance at the underlying open source, open source components that we have in Meltano. Meltano is built in Python and most of the components that we are using are also built in Python. So for our extractors and loaders, we are using Singer IO tabs and targets. Uh, the Singer IO community has done a great job adding, create, pre implementing and maintaining more than 50 uh, tabs and targets. And this is an interesting part that you can help us uh, with contributing and adding more tabs that Meltano can support to Meltano. We are using for our transformation layer DBT. DBT is an amazing tool that allows you to run transformations using pure SQL. If you, not, you have not uh, seen it, please check it out. It's, it takes care of everything for you. So you just write your transformations with pure SQL and they take care of compilation, uh, dynamic leaking, testing, and a lot more things. We build at the moment ourselves the model and analyze part that you've seen, Meltano UI. Uh, but we also support other connectors, like for example, you can use Jupyter Notebooks on top of uh, our analytics database. And finally, for the orchestration part that you've seen, we integrate with Apache Airflow that runs inside Meltano. So how can you reach us? Uh, please join Meltano Slack. I have a link, uh, we have a link in Meltano.com. I don't post it here because it changes every month. So go to Meltano.com and uh, follow the link to join the Slack. Most all the team hang out on the general channel. We are very responsible, uh, responsive. Please ping us there. And you can also, of course, talk to us in issues in the Meltano project or any other project in the Meltano group if you have something more specific to discuss with us. Uh, how can someone help us? First of all, something that a lot of people forget, and this is especially important for us that we are at such an early stage. Please, use if you use Meltano and find it useful, please open issues for any bugs that you may find, missing features, or just ideas that you may have uh, about what we can do in Meltano. If you are good with Python, you can update one of our extractors and add of the extractors that we currently maintain and add the missing API point endpoint. For example, in the GitLab extractor I just presented, we don't export comments, notes as we call them in GitLab. So somebody could uh, go to the GitLab extractor and add uh, the API, API endpoint for getting comments from issues, merge requests, and epics, and uh, submit that uh, uh, contribution. If you are good with SQL, uh, you can play around. We have ways to add more transformations and models, uh, the things I, I just presented. If you build something interesting, please contribute back uh, with transformations that maybe other people may find useful. If you are, uh, you know some Python and after you understand how Meltano works, you can help us by checking more extractors. At the, at the moment we support more or less 10 extractors. There are 50 more there. Uh, we will get all the help we can get if somebody can check a, an extractor. That means that you run the, the extractor, uh, check the configuration settings and go through the flow of adding uh, an extractor to Meltano. If you know Vue.js, you can contribute to Meltano UI. And you, if you are feeling uh, good with Python, you can contribute to Meltano Core, which is the core product of Meltano, uh, the core engine. Finally, last but not least, it's we always welcome any contributions to our documentation 
and more tutorials for people to be able to onboard Meltano and uh, use Meltano in the optimal way. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, in contributing or doing a, a merge request for a GitLab Hackathon, we have a link here. Uh, or we have issues in the Meltano group uh, labeled as accepting merge requests. You can check them out. Let me open one. So you can see here we have more than uh, 20 uh, accepting merge requests uh, issues. You can jump into one. Some are in Meltano core, some are labeled as UI or testing or documentation. So for example, the one I was telling you is this one, extract comments for issues, merge requests and epics. You can get there and uh, check the description and start working on a, on a feature. Or if you want to do something more UI based, let's say for example, we have this, uh, which is pure UX. Uh, it's a simple merge request uh, to val validate an extractor loader or something like that. So let me go back to my presentation. So who to ping? We are a small team uh, of six persons. Uh, if you want to know anything about Meltano Core or want to work on Meltano Core, it's ping Mikael or me in Slack or inside GitLab. Meltano UI is Derek and Ben. For Vue.js stuff, it's also Ben and Derek. And Ben is uh, one of the most active uh, uh, participants in the Vue.js community. So he can give you a hint or two also. For documentation, me and Ben. Tutorials is me. Anything about extractors, loaders, transformations of models, you can ping me freely. And uh, on what and how to contribute, of course, it's Dawe. Dawe is also one of the first employees of uh, GitLab, so he knows well how to help people contribute and uh, guide people uh, on that process. And of course, Danielle, our general manager, she's very responsible on Slack and uh, on our projects. You can ask her anything, ping her. Please uh, contact us. We, we will be happy to help you out. And uh, I think, yeah, that's it. Please visit meldano.com and our projects. Check it out and get started. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks for the talk and, and the demo. Uh, and if people have any questions, I mean, feel free to type them on the chat or, or, or verbalize them. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, I got a couple of questions for you, Giannis, if you don't mind. Uh, one is, I mean, so how, so you're not, Meltano doesn't follow the normal release cycle of rest of GitLab, is that correct? Or yeah, we can you tell me about, yeah, yeah, tell us about the release cycle and how it's done. But. Thank you very much for this yeah. question. Yeah. At the moment, because we are at such an early stage, we iterate yeah. very, very fast. So yeah. we have one milestone per week. So oh, wow. we set targets and uh, we iterate weekly. And that means that shows how fast we iterate and also that there are small things for everyone to get in and uh, help us out or uh, do stuff. Cool, cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, all right. So, uh, anybody else have any questions? Or, I mean, Dawa, uh, Derek, anything else you want to add? Uh, Nothing much to add, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Giannis tried to reinforce that. But yeah, just ping us on Slack or in issues. Right. Um, so, definitely want to hear yeah. from you. Right. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, Giannis did a great job explaining basically everything you'll need to know. But one of the big differences uh, between the experience contributing to Meltano and GitLab is that there is so much low hanging fruit in Meltano. So many things were just five minutes of work or half an hour could get us so far. Well, of course, GitLab with the skill of it and just the fact that there's like at this point hundreds and hundreds of people working on it full time. It might be harder to find that little thing. But if you just want to kind of work on your Vue.js skills or your Python skills, or you just want to try a new project where you as a contributor would actually if you, if we you become a Meltano contributor, you immediately are one eighth of the people developing Meltano. Oh, GitLab yeah. that's not the case anymore. So uh, in that sense, it's a really great way to kind of become part of a um, get a contribution community of a new project. And there's so much to do and so much to learn. And we are of course more than happy to help anyone out uh, figure it out with us, basically. Well, yeah, I appreciate it, Jan. It's basically listing everybody on the team on the last slide, so you you can 
you can ping everybody in, in one shot, I, I think. Uh, I mean, the other question, Giannis, was, uh, so I, I'm sure this is documented in the documentation. So what, what are like the system requirements like for, for having Meltano on your, on your system, on your laptop? Oh, they are very yeah. low, especially okay. GitLab. So right. because they Python and uh, you, you can get started very easily. It's, uh, the requirements are very low. The only yeah. part that uh, requires some memory is uh, running Airflow and running a okay. Postgres. Is, but uh, you can do that even with a small uh, droplet if uh, because I okay. was mentioning. Cool. Excellent. So, yeah, so it should be relatively easy for people to get started. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it works on my 2010 Linux uh, using Ubuntu 16. It has no problems. Cool. Nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything on the chat. Any questions or comments from? Uh, what are community members? Uh, maybe I can say something. Uh, I yeah. definitely want to be part of the one eighth of the contributors. Uh, I noticed that there were a couple of GitLab extractors. I was wondering whether Meltano started because of, of a pinpoint that GitLab had internally. Yannis, do you want to answer that? Oh, feel free, Dawe. Uh, I mean, Janice, I think you have more context here, but Brian, I think it's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, GitLab, Mel, GitLab wouldn't be, I guess, in a way, investing in this project if it didn't make sense at some point to um, also get in the business of solving this problem. And that very much happened when GitLab itself uh, found that there wasn't a tool out there that did what GitLab was looking for. And then, of course, it's easy at a certain point to say, then why don't we build it uh, for, with the community? Uh, but I know that Janis actually, I mean, I only joined the Maltana team at this point two and a half months ago or so. Janis has far more background uh, information on how it got started and how he got involved with it in the early days, uh, way ahead of me or Danielle or any kind of... Um, you know, kind of more start the hierarchy system coming in place. Janus has been there forever. Yeah, so we started uh, Meltano with uh, our uh, general manager for a year was Sid. So he was very involved. This is uh, this was his idea, his vision of uh, building a, a product and bringing the DevOps uh, mentality and what we are doing in GitLab to the to the data management world. Because if you check uh, how data management works at the moment, especially the ELT part, extracting, loading, transforming, and all that stuff, they are very complicated and they require a data engineer to run them. And uh, uh, so we wanted to bring all the mentality of uh, GitLab to, to data management. And that's the, the core vision, the core idea. And that's where uh, we are focusing on and uh, we are keep our vision uh, still with Daniel and the rest of the team at the moment. And I would say it's not a coincidence that our persona is called the founder, because in this case, the founder literally does kind of basically uh, reference or refer to Sid. Maybe not the Sid of today, because of course, the, the founder we're focusing on is far earlier stage, kind of full of people of the company, no data team, no nothing, but access to data sources and uh, wanting to do you know, something with it, get some dashboards, get some insights out of it. So we are, well, Sid wanted this because he was a founder and he couldn't find it. And now we're building it for founders just like Sid. Oh, awesome. I think uh, in final uh, closing, as thou said, there are a lot of issues on GitLab, but there's a lot of demand for them. So I'll definitely take a look at it. Cool. Awesome. Can't wait to see you on Slack, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> cool. and you too, uh, Mateusz is also in the in the Zoom. Cool. Yeah, Brian, I'll follow up with you on it. We have a call scheduled a couple of weeks, so yes, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll ask you how things are going. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. If there are no other questions, uh, thanks everybody for your time, and have a good rest of your day or your evening. All right. Have a good Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.